first of all, one should always be fair. Trump is one of those people who are instantly and obviously hard, ruthless, and you've got to admire the power of the verbal punch they pack. Like he's not a very intelligent speaker, but the way he speaks, he like dumbs it down for people. He like he the way he speaks, he he hits a primal part of your brain that just makes certain people react very strongly. Yes, you're dealing with a primeval monster who who takes you back into the slime from whence we came. And that works. He speaks from the gut to the gut. And if you don't look after yourself with him, he'll hurt you. And because you know that, it's right to fear him. The problem is managing your fear while you're dealing with him, because he can say something so vicious that it, that it can silence you, or you're left gasping. And I think what happened with Hillary was that Hillary never quite got through. There's a beautiful moment thinking of my uh, grand unborn grand uh, unborn granddaughter's bet of five hundred quid on Joe to win. When Joe says to him, "Will you just shut up, man?" Remember in the first debate, mm -hmm. and that was a kind of wonderful moment because it showed like Joe's. Well, I was, you know, uh, Joe's obviously he's getting on a bit. His granddaddy can't remember where the keys to the garage are. He's a bit gaga, -ga. but he's not. He's not a patsy. One of my favourite movies. Um, is, now, how have I got the right title? The Last Show with Art Carney. Have you seen it? No. A wonderful movie. Set in the. It's in the seventies. And it's about Art Carney, who's a wonderful actor who in real life had a limp. And so he limps and he's an old private eye and he speaks in 1940s Raymond Chandler, the big sleep style slang. Um, and he, there's a crazy hippie woman who comes to him with some stuff about a cat, but behind the, uh, the cat story, something dark is happening and in this kind of moment of, of poetry and beauty the old private eye um slowly untangles the darkness the gangsters and becomes a hero even though he's old he's got something wrong with him um he's got some kind of bad stomach ulcer and every now and he collapses and at one point the baddies beat him up and he coughs blood. And then a, a critical moment, the baddies have got the upper hand and he collapses, but he's mucking about and he's got his gun and he says, listen, son, you're in trouble. And it's kind of beautiful. And there was a moment, the moment when Joe said, listen, ma'am, won't you shut up? Was the Art Carney moment in the in that debate mm. um and it was and the thing about joe was that joe isn't money and he kind of gets standing up for himself and standing up for the people he represents so there was although granddad is a bit uh is far too old and doesn't know where he's left the keys he will, he's up for a fight that was a sweet moment mm. but trump's very impressive the other thing which is squalid about Trump, and I hate it, was his transactionalism. If, um, like, if I were to meet you, um, if I, you know, if it, it, the world gets good again and I can fly uh, to Florida. and yeah, amazing. Uh, we could sit here and drink wine together. Yeah, well, well what I'd do is, um, uh, to be honest, I'd get a bottle of Italian red and I'd sit on the park bench opposite the Church of Scientology and I'd go for a bit, then then I'd grow up, then we'd go, uh, we'd hire, um, we should do this anyway, we'd hire a soft top convertible, drive around the nice bits of Florida, find a lovely bar by the beach, I'd go for a great big long swim because I like doing that, and then, and then we'd come back 
and eat uh, ribs and drink good wine and talk about the world. And that sounds I amazing. At any point, if I paid for all of that because I'd got lots of money, I don't, I'm just fantasizing. I wouldn't think for a second that I owned you because I paid it, paid for it. Trump would. So what happened with Trump was that when we arrived, we were going to interview him on the Tuesday, but on the Saturday or the Sunday, we went to, is it Bedminster, his golf resort in uh, New Jersey? I'm not sure he, the name of it. He's got, he's got a golf resort in New Jersey. I think it's called Bedminster or something like this. Um, and um, it's the Mar-a-Lago of New Jersey. And um, he was great in terms of TV. He was great. He said, hi, John. Uh, great to meet you. They're looking after you. It's wonderful. Really good. He gave me a, uh, um, a Trump hat. Not make America grump again, but Trump golf uh, red hat. Fantastic. Um, very useful because I've got a bald head. I used to drive it around. I used to wear it when I uh, drove my soft top VW Beetle around. I don't do that anymore, lest somebody kill me. But um, I, uh, <laughs> anyway, I, um, I ended up, um, we're in a golf buggy uh, together. And um, he, he said, okay, John. And um, he gives me a lift and he goes off a of June, like really quite a, a high speed. And you can hear me, I'm on the, the end of the, um, of the capacity of my sound mic feeding back to the camera. But as we disappear and the light is framed, so we're dying, the light is dying. But as the light dies and we head off into the sunset, you can clearly, uh, clearly hear me say, I'm a bit worried about the driver. <laughs> because, because this fucking lunatic is going to kill me. Um, and that was Trump. And then it was just you and him in the golf cart. Yeah. 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 It's on Panorama. It's a BBC Panorama. Uh, you know, Trump, the Kremlin candidate question mark. And um, and that's me. And, and then he he organized for us to go up in his Trump helicopter and fly around the golf course, all of which is wonderful pictures. He's not there. He's doing something else. But. But what this means is that when I come down to sit and interview him, he thinks he owns me. Now, you know, I've been in a golf buggy before. I don't like golf. I think it ruins a, a good walk. Um, but um, I have been in a golf buggy and I've been in lots of helicopters, oftentimes with the American Marines and the American Army in northern Iraq and all sorts of fucking weird and uh, crazy places. But the idea that you can buy my soul for a ride in a golf buggy and a ride in a helicopter, that's just foolish. And the story I was there to ask him about was that he'd, he'd um, built this golf course in, the, uh, in Scotland, but he'd fallen out with um, his Scottish neighbors because he treated them appallingly. Um, and there's a problem with the way Trump treats ordinary people who get in his way. That was the purpose of the film.